Hello listeners, welcome to Studio NIOS. I am Dr. Pooja Chopra. Today we will discuss school as an organ of society. School as an organ of society is an important topic. As we all know that school and society are closely interlinked. School and society both influence each other in many ways. Schools are the reflections of the society. According to John Dewey, society is a miniature community, an embryonic society. Education and schools are defined by social interactions. There is a transmission of culture. Let us first explore the concept of school and then we will discuss how society influence schools and play a significant role in the development of education system. Later on, we will discuss the role of socio-cultural factors, political conditions and economic milieu in determining the nature of educational institutions, its objectives and curriculum development. In this lecture, we will also discuss how education is used by the state or by the dominant sections of society to assert their power. School School is defined as a subsystem of the larger system of the society. According to Thapen, 2003, school is a primary institution through which values and norms are constituted as well as reproduced. The schooling processes are related to power and social control. As we all know that society is stratified and unequal. School is a part of society. Teacher, learner and parents are very much drawn from the same unequal and stratified society. Schools cannot be taken in isolation. The stratified society influences the educational system in following ways. First one is socio-cultural influence. As you all know that education of any society has direct correlations with its socio-cultural factors. This means that the process of education is evolved in social structure, social norms and value system. School is one such creation of human society to transfer the existing cultural content from one generation to next generation. In informal settings, socialization is a process through which community transacts or educate their members about the norms and values of the society. Traditionally, education is provided by religious institutions like Christian missionaries, Islamic bandrasas, Buddhist monasteries and other religious organizations. These institutions have the proselyting features and they inculcate their religious ideals through education. These are not limited religions. Each community transmit their norms and values through their schools and educational system. In this process of education and socialization, we also transmit the biases and differences of our society, that is hierarchy, stratification and inherent inequalities. The dominance of elite culture, gender disparity and other socio-cultural features are also transmitted to the younger generations. Pierre Bourdieu, French sociologist, viewed that education perpetuates the culture of dominant class. This phenomena he called cultural reproduction. The dominant culture get repeatedly reproduced through specific social practices and texts in which the voices of oppressed are silenced. Those who hold powers are the one who decides what kind of knowledge is worthwhile and enough to be passed on the future generations. Naturally, this entails giving importance to knowledge of certain groups at the cost of the others. Paul Freire echoed the views that the schools are used by elite people to maintain the status quo of the society. The teaching process, teaching methods and language makes a difference between oppressors and the oppressed. As Paul Freire has rightly said that education for elite class are used as a tool for generating a culture of silence. Schools, while acting as moral authorities, preparing in of people for an occupation and in performing these roles, should not become subservient to the community's dominant class. Schools should be a place of social reconstruction, where critical thinking is nurtured and this would lead to the production and dissemination of knowledge that has a bearing on the needs of the people. And in doing so, it resists and counteracts cultural manipulation in favor of decentralization of control. 
Economic aspects, equality of opportunities is a core value of democracy. Indian constitution, as we all know, is committed in providing quality education to all of its citizens despite their class, caste and gender. Yet, it has become increasingly clear that equalization of opportunity is exceedingly difficult to achieve in the present scenario where there is a gap between haves and have not. Due to this gap between rich and poor has been widened, we know that there are different kinds of schools serving different sections of people in society. Some cater to the elite and some cater to the middle class while the other caters to the poor and the disempowered. There are also some schools that are established within the purpose of integrating cultural knowledge within school curriculum. It is commonly felt that children from schools for the elite and the influential develop cognitive skills and perspectives that equip them for better and privilege to succeed in the life. Therefore, economy of society is an important factor which has deep-rooted implications on educational development and human development of any region. Karl Marx considered economy the basic structure for getting power and dominance in society. Further, educational system also plays an important role in legitimizing control of the dominant section of the society. Thus, the economy can create wealth, but educational power can only make it sustainable and provide legitimacy in the society. Now, we will discuss about political conditions and its influence on education. The nature of state, political parties, its ideologies and policies direct the nature of the education system and its policy in society. Paul Freire called it as a political agenda of education. Democratic states profess ideals of democratic education, development, However, inherent inequality is the weakness of these states. Indian democracy could not achieve the goal of common school system due to political lobbying as business interests of the elite class are against the establishment of common school system. All democratic societies fail to provide education for all, particularly the deprived and marginalized sections. They could not have equal access to education owing to the differential status. As we all know that education favors the elite, as the elites are the one who follows, forms the rules and policies of education. Contrary to this, socialist states claim for common education system, but inculcate their own political ideology rather than secular education. For example, communist regime of USSR and na Nazi socialist principle of Germany are two best examples of this. In 1933, under Nazi German education system, schools were designed to mold children to get them unquestionably accept Nazi's doctrine. Similarly, USSR, after 1917, used education to continue their communist agenda and educational institutions become the place of political socializations rather than the search of truth. All kinds of knowledge could not be considered worth imparting. Political and economic considerations determine the validity or appropriateness of any knowledge. It is this validity of knowledge that decides its inclusion or omission from the curriculum framework. Educational aims have a historical character and they change over a period of time. For example, Britishers use education as a tool for dominating Indians ideologically which strengthen their colonial rule. For example, Macaulay in his minutes of 1835 states that a single shelf of a good European library was worth the whole native literature of India and Arabia. Macaulay minutes also pronounce that any kind of spending on Sanskrit and Arabic learning would be a dead loss. The Michele stated, what was why we spent on the Arabic and Sanskrit colleges? It is not merely a dead loss to the cause of truth. It is a bounty money paid to raise up the champions of error. Thus, he is deteriorating the indigenous knowledge at the cost of their own knowledge. Colonial education strengthens its hold by systematic rejection of indigenous knowledge and replacing it with knowledge as well as the culture of the colonists themselves. 
and then they maintain the supremacy, their supremacy over the locals. All these factors, namely socio-cultural, economic and political factors have a deep rooted influence on the education system and its development. Apart from these three factors, the history of society, geographical context and other complexities indirectly influences the education process and overall development of the society. Despite these influences, the differences in ability and family background of the children should be equally deserving of respect, equally worth of membership in the school community and equally entitled to develop their unique potential. Let us summarize. Listeners, in this lecture, we have discussed that education and society have close association since inception of society itself. On one hand, education prepares individuals to perform different social roles in society, whereas on the other hand, society and culture determine system of socialization and the nature of education to be imparted to its member. Each society from simple to the complex one, has its own system of educating their young generation and accordingly the education institutions are developed. On one hand, education prepared individuals to perform different social roles in the society, whereas on the other hand, society and culture determines the system of socialization and the nature of education to be imparted to the members. Each society, from simple to the complex one, has its own system of educating the young learners and accordingly the institutions are developed. First, education carries many of the social functions in society to determine culture and knowledge. This alone makes mankind different from other animals of the earth. Secondly, society has played a detrimental role in the process of education. The nature of state political parties, its ideologies and policies direct the nature of education system and its policy in the society. Hence, education of any society has direct correlations with its social cultural factors. The process of education evolves in its social culture, social norms and value system. So, school is one such creation of human society to transfer to transfer the existing cultural content from one generation to the next generation. Thus, school is a part of society. Teacher, learner, parents are very much drawn from the same unequal and stratified society. Schools cannot be taken in isolation. Hence, schools are not neutral. They are influenced by various factors such as socio-political factors, cultural factors and geographical context. Thanks for your patience listening.